let's say I've got this great business that's made through all these hurdles so far. What's the position size? Because you can go anywhere from zero to 100 to even more if you're going to use leverage. First thing I do when I'm excited and it's ticked all my boxes is I write in my investment journal and I write a pre-mortem. And what I do is I say, okay, it's two years from now. It's late 2017. In late 2015, I went out and I bought this stock. And it was an absolute disaster. What happened? And, and you, you, you want to use this to, to, to brainstorm all the things that could happen. Well, interest rates went up, so the debt became prohibitively expensive. There was a recession, and as a result, they tripped their covenants. Um, the competitor that was in trouble went into bankruptcy, cut costs, got a new CEO, and became a very fierce competitor and tore them apart. You just put it all out there. There was a nuclear attack, uh, and the company, was, the company headquarters were destroyed on a day when everybody was in the office. Like, just write it all out. Like, you want to free your mind, and the pre-mortem gives you a way to think about bad scenarios for something that you're excited about in a non-threatening way. Your brain does not want you to think about bad scenarios for this thing that you've now worked all this time on. Like you've spent days and weeks on this now. You want to give yourself a way to think of the bad things that could happen. And this is one way that works for me. So I write that out in the pre-mortem. I say, all of these things are bad. Um, do I still want to buy it? And usually, I have to go back to my downside and, and change some numbers because I realize that maybe I wasn't thinking about that competitor quite right. And to be honest with myself, I have to, to lower some numbers. Um, but that might still come to the case where I still have a better than 5 to 1 upside to downside on this, and I still want to buy it. So now I've done my pre-mortem. This actually helps me feel better and more confident about moving forward. Um, but I recommend that you do it. So then it's past that test. What do you do? What's the position size? Um, well, first off, do you have cash? If you don't have cash, I write again in my journal, well, I have to sell something to buy this. What, what do I have that I would sell to buy this? And write it out. How is it a disaster to sell this thing that I know well and understand well to buy this new shiny thing that I don't know as well? And write it out. And your, body, your, your brain is good at comparing two things. Like We're good at relative stuff. And this is a good exercise. You may find, and this is a victory, you may find that the thing that you already own is actually better than this new shiny thing that you bought. And you're better off not buying it. So zero is a good percentage position size on that. Um, but, but check it. If you do have cash, um, the way I think about these things is if it ticks all my boxes, 10% of the fund, 10% um, of my portfolio goes into this idea. Great business, great management team, great price. I feel comfortable about understanding this business. I'm going to 10% in. If I'm really excited about it, if the price is even better, the business is even better, um, the management is really something I get excited about, 15% of the fund. Sometimes, sometimes when I'm really lucky, I find something that I understand and maybe other people don't understand quite as well, and I can put 20% plus in. So this is beautiful business, management team that I really trust, who's really got a track record of doing great things. Um, I'm excited to, to ride in their car, and the price is is just ridiculous. So I put 20, 25% of the fund in there. That doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it's wonderful. And if I'm really lucky, maybe once or twice in a decade, you can find something or I can find something that I have really a special insight on and somehow found um, this one glorious thing that you can put a third of the fund or Maybe more if you find something like truly, truly outrageous. Um, but that is like rare, beautiful, special. You're looking for it, but don't think that you find it tomorrow because that's dangerous. Um, you want to back up the truck. You don't want to back off a cliff. Like you, but this is how I try to, to think about this stuff, right? Um.